Hi, my name is Kimberly Adams, and I am your host of the Daughters of Zion talk show. The Daughters of Zion is nestled in the beautiful sanctuary of Jesus People Church at 4400 Hickory Hill Road, right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce to you our distinguished guests for this evening. First, on my close left, is Sister Tiffany Austin. Hallelujah. Next to her is our awesome Angela Jones. Good morning. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, ladies. It's going to be another awesome show for you this evening where we'll be discussing the woman of the Bible, Jezebel. Jezebel. The title of today's um, conversation with these great women will be how to know the wrong influence. How to know the wrong influence. Now, Sister Tiffany, of course, we'll start off with you. We understand that Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab. And as she became more and more comfortable in her position as a wife, she began to decide to change the mindset of her king. And she wanted him to begin to rule and to begin to worship the, the body of Tyr, as opposed to giving our love and our worship unto Christ. Talk about it a little bit, how it's important as a woman of God and as the wife of a man that is a ruler over your home or a ruler over any business. How important is it that we stay grounded and understand that we have to always keep God first? Oh, um, because, well, God loved us more than we could ever love each other. Mm -hmm. God loved us more than our then my husband loved me more than he loved my, more than my husband loved me. God loved me more than my kids loved me. And as a woman of God, we have to instill into our kids and into our home that no matter how much love we have for each other, we love God more because he gave his only begotten son so that, you know, for us, he's allowed his son to be sacrificed for us. The shed blood, it was for us. It wasn't, I didn't shed any blood for either one of us, for Amen. nobody, so that they may have life. But God did it, and he loved us more than we can ever love each each other and anyone. That's why I feel so so much compassion when, when we have loved ones that has passed away. Yeah, God's word said weeping may endure for a night, but Amen. joy comes in the morning, and Amen. that's what helps me because I know that God loved them way more than I could ever love them. Amen. And that what helps me stay grounded. And that what helps me put a smile on my face when I think about like loved ones that has passed away. Yeah. That's powerful that you said that because we have to remember even um, as we go throughout our lives, we have a tendency to worship the wrong, you know, and our worship should only be for God. We understand that God is, should be the head of our life, and without him, where is the rest of our lives? Mm -hmm. So we have a tendency to worship our husbands, we worship our children, we worship our jobs. But if, if we don't have a true worship for God, there should be absolutely no other worship that we should even consider. Sister Angela, I'm going to have you to speak to that even the more because... We understand so many different facets of the story of Jezebel. There are so many different areas that we ha we want to try to tap into tonight. What was the one thing that stuck out about her to you that made you, her such a, a infamous person in the Bible? Tell us about that. Well, the one thing that stuck out to me the most about her was um, even down to the end before she died, she still was this wicked woman she didn't made her face up she got her hair all pretty and she thought she still was able to be a seductress seductress as she was you know with other men or whatever but and it's just amazing because at no particular point in time did you ever hear or read where she attempted to even try to change her ways her thing was it was her way or there was no way she and women we have so much power and a lot of times women just misused this power just like she did mm -hmm. instead of drawing them the right way she steered them the wrong way and at the same time you know the man he could have spoke up and put his foot down and said no this is we're going to worship my god you know mm -hmm. and instead he fell for her you mm -hmm. know and the bible warns about this type of woman and 
And it's sad, but there are a lot of women out there like that, you know, mm -hmm. and just life, I don't know. <laughs> Sister Tiffany, I want you to talk about that too, because Sister Angela said something powerful. She said the power of a woman yes. and how we can use our superpowers in the wrong way. Tell us about how it's important that we know that we're powerful, but at the same time, we have to be submissive and we have to be in tune with that of God. Tell us about the power of the woman and how we can misuse that power. We have to know that we are servants of God and not servants of man. Amen. Yes. So that's one thing there. And how to be, when we're being submissive, we submit ourselves unto God and ask God to bless us and allow us to be holy and acceptable unto him. Man comes next, but it's all about God. And once you put God first, then everything else comes and everything else comes after putting God first. Mm -hmm. And Jezebel, she didn't work. She was so wicked mm -hmm. and, oh my gosh, she was so wicked and so evil that she, she, her focus wasn't on God at all. Her focus was on getting whatever she wanted. Mm -hmm. And it's not about us, it's about God. And so she did, she, she, she lured him and she, you know, she persuaded him. You know, she said, let me do it. She told him, get up and eat. And let, she told A, Ahab, get up and eat, I, I'll do it. <laughs> she'll, go get the, she'll go get the land from mm -hmm. Nabar. And, that, you know, and by him allowing her to do that, by him not putting his foot down like Sister Angela said, by him not letting her, you know, not letting her, by him not saying anything and letting her go head on, he knew evil was, she was full of evil. So yeah. he knew the, he knew that she wasn't going to be up to anything good. She only used the word of God when it, when it benefited her. You know, mm. she wanted to fast because it was going to be, benefit her. She didn't want to fast for God. She wanted to do evil, but that's what she tried to cover it up with. That's how. That's what she tried to cover it up with, with the, having everybody do a fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great that you mentioned that. She knew. And actually, you said how he knew <laughs> all along, every step of the way, that nothing good is going to come of this. She's not going to do anything that's going to be right or do anything that's going to uplift people. She's not really using the word of God in order to exalt God or for us to do right or wrong. That she's really using the word of God only to get what she wants. Yeah. And Sister Angela, talk to that because, speak to that because how many times as women do we use our own feminine wiles and our own ways to get what we want, understanding how strong and powerful we can be? Tell us how important it is that we, and how do we get to the point that we can use our powers to do the right thing as opposed to use the powers that we have in order to continue to do wrong? Wow. Um, I remember we talked about something similar to this in, in um, Sunday school. Like, it takes too much time to be evil, you know, Amen. and when you're using your powers as a woman in the wrong way, you got to think on that thing for a minute and figure out how you're going to do it. You got to check the person out and see how they're going and get in their vibe and whatever when you can just easily turn around and do the right thing. Right. And, you know, sometimes doing the wrong thing, it, it backfires on us. And so, you know, when you put that out there, you know, the saying you reap what you sow. So when you're doing someone like that, you can imagine it's going to come back around to you, but it's not going to come out the same way you put it out there. But you are going to get that back. So the same way you're using and manipulating someone else, someone else is going to do the same thing to you. But the thing is, can you handle it when it comes back to you the way you put it out there? Right, right. Yeah. And we yeah. always talk about giving it out and, and dishing it, dishing it. But can we take what we really dish? Can we take the things of, the, of evil and give it to someone but can't receive it back? And that's powerful that you make mention of that because I like when Sister Tiffany said that Ahab had an understanding that nothing about Jezebel was going to turn out right. But at the same time, he still followed her. Talk about that. And I want you to kind of put on your psychologist hat now and tell me a little bit. What, what makes people know someone is not right, but they still allow them to get away with everything that they do? The flesh. Wow. Talk about the flesh. That's the flesh. And, you know, Jezebel was a seductress, mm -hmm. you know, and women and men, but you know, but we're talking about her. So women, they have, you know, we have this, you know, we can get the man and we have this about us and we can do this and we can do
do that and have the man look and, and follow him. And she used everything that she could to continue to have him with, like we said, with his mouth wide open, just following and just looking. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. And she did it. And he knew she was up to no good. But by it being her, and he's continued to watch her. And you know what? Sometimes when um, when one person is doing wrong, and if you want you want to be a part of that too, you're gonna jump in too, or you you're gonna be a part of the crowd. But you you may not get your hands dirty, but you're gonna be standing there in the midst of it. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that and that was him. Uh huh. And that was him. He knew she was the wild one. Wow. She was the one that, you know, he couldn't predict what she was going to do. No one could predict her. Right, right. Yeah. So she was this spontaneous, this spark that popped up with all evil and everything else around her. And he was attracted to that. Mm. That was a that was that flesh. That that flesh have to die daily. Mm -hmm. That was that flesh. Right. And by him marrying her, knowing the kind of woman that she was, he was allowing the enemy, he was allowing the enemy to overcome him. He was, he was, he was giving the enemy power. When he, when he married her, he gave the enemy power. Wow, wow, wow. Ooh, you opened some doors there when you said, you give the enemy power when you, when you allow the flesh to make that decision, yeah. to make our decisions. And to speak to that a little bit, because how do we make sure that we keep the flesh in subjection so it does not make the decisions as opposed to God making our decisions. How do we get strong enough to beat back the flesh? Because Ahab couldn't. He allowed the flesh to roam, seeking whom he could devour, seeking who what he could take over. Tell us how do we get strong enough that we can start to beat back the flesh. Wow. wow. There are several ways we can get stronger to beat the flesh. One is you have to build a relationship with God. Amen. The second one is reading your word, meditating on that word. Fasting is another way. And as a parent, you know, and we can let our flesh overcome us, come us even in with discipline our children. Because yeah. we can love our children, but the love that we have for them, for our kids is kind of similar to this, like this false love. You think you really love them like Ahab thought he was loving her. So that's how you allow people to get away with things because I really love them and I just, I just want to make them happy, this, this, and that. But all the time, you're trying to please man. You're not pleasing God. And even I've gotten to the point in the past couple of years, even with dealing my, with my kids, Lord knows sometimes it hurts to discipline them or to say certain things or to stop certain things because you want to see them be happy. But sometimes what they're doing to be happy is not pleasing to God. And when you're the head of the household and you are the woman of your house, or even if you're the man of the head of the house, you have to make sure things are right, you know, um, make sure the kids are doing because you're going to be held accountable for that, especially when you know better right. and you see it's going on and you're not saying anything. You have to be the one to step in like, Lord, I know this ain't right because I gotta please God. I don't have to please my kids. Because right. when I get, go there tomorrow, I ain't gotta look at my kids put me in heaven or hell. So I'm looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. So it, it's, it, it, that's not how you overcome the flesh. You have to pray on that thing. I'm mean, seriously pray on that because we need help, you know, because right. the kids don't come with instructions. Life doesn't come with instructions. So you have to make plans and do things accordingly. Lord, help lead and guide and direct me. That is so true. Lead, guide, and direct me each and every step of the way, we need that daily. Daily. Like she said, the flesh dies daily. Amen. And it do, you got to let that flesh die daily. Let the inner man grow each and every day. It's a continual, pro it never stops. It wow. never stops. And we have a tendency to think that we arrived. So now that we've gotten a little bit of word under our belt and now that we're doing things that are super godly, we're the super Christians, mm -hmm. then now we think that the enemy can't seep in and devour. We let our guards down thinking that we can um, stand up against anything. And um, we learned, I think it was last week in a Sunday school lesson that, you know, God tells us to flee. Or actually, Paul told us that we need to flee fornication. But it's, it's not fornication. It's all sin. We need to run from it mm -hmm. because we're not as strong as we think we are. and uh, But there are ways that we can become stronger. Just because you become stronger doesn't mean that you still want to take on the flesh or you want to take on the enemy. But there's ways that we can make sure 
sure that we are strong enough that we can walk away, that we can get away from them. And Sister Tiffany, talk even more about Jezebel because not only was she evil and that she was seductress and she wanted things her way, but she was so evil that she was willing to kill in order to get what she wanted. How many people oh, talk about how we have a tendency to kill relationships in order to make sure we have what we want in a relationship you know i can come between people because the enemy loves to break up relationships not just man and woman but friendships and and and, and family relationships the enemy loves to break that up how can we make sure that we don't allow the enemy to take in to seep in and make us try to break up relationships even with people even with our children you know we can pit one child against the other how important is it that we stay grounded in God and we understand that love is what we need to interject and not a spirit of hate and kill. We ask God creating us a clean heart and renewing us the right spirit. We gotta have our hands clean. Amen. And by me saying have our hands clean is trying not to pit one, pin one person against the other mm -hmm. one. I always come at people with the love of God. We try your best to be Christ-like. Jezebel's hands were so filthy, mm. the dogs wouldn't even eat them. Her hands and her feet and her skull was left. Amen. The dogs didn't even want to devour that. And I was, look, I was reading and I said, wow, the dogs didn't even take her hands because her hands was full of wickedness. Wow. It didn't take her feet because those feet was to me was just like Satan's feet when he was going to and fro where he wanted to go. He was traveling the earth going to and fro mm -hmm. when he went to God and God told him, try my servant Job. Mm -hmm. Those was the same feet. And I said, you know what, Jezebel was nothing but the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the dogs didn't even want that in their stomach. You know, oh, I it's said, bad. wow. I yeah. said, wow. No. I said, Lord, help me with this because I was reading and I said, oh my gosh, those hands was just full of wickedness, full of evil. Right. Those was murderous hands. Them dogs didn't want that in their belly. Them feet, they was trotting to and fro. Them Satan feet. Them dogs didn't want that in their belly. Oh my God, my God. Left it right goodness. there. Mm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> just, I got a picture. <laughs> know. You know, in my mind, you made it so vivid because you're right. She was so filthy. The dogs didn't even want it. Mm -mm. The dog didn't even. And dogs eat any, anything, anything, yeah. anything that's available. If they can go back to their own vomit, vomit and lick their own vomit, you know they will take the hands of a dead carcass if it was even worthy of that. But Jezebel was so bad that she wasn't even worthy of the dogs eating behind her. That's powerful because we have to be mindful that we cannot fall to the wickedness of the enemy. Mm. That we cannot fall for the beauty of someone or the style of conversation or the style of dress because we need to see the spirit of a person and walk and understand by the spirit because to, to whom is things are spiritual, to whom he is spiritual, all things are spiritual. So if I'm a spiritual person, I should connect with the spirit of a man or the spirit of a woman. Talk about that a little bit, Angela, that we have to know that we have to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh and understand that if we make our spirit stronger, that we will connect with strong spirits of God as opposed to finding ourselves looking at the hands of Jezebel and deciding not to touch it. Wow, that's awesome. And and that only comes with wisdom. Amen. You know, and we have to get wisdom from God. You ask for it. He'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. And because it's, in this flesh, we make mistakes. And we have to remember that the enemy comes in sheep's clothing. Because mm. I met a gentleman before in the past, and he knew the Bible. And, and at that time, I wasn't in church like that, so I thought that was a man. I was like, this man must be of God. He know this Bible. Right. He can crow through scriptures, you right, know. Right, right. The enemy, the devil, all day long. And I was like, wow. I didn't think that at that particular time it could work that way. But now as I've grown as a Christian, I do understand it's better to be in the spirit when it comes to relationships or like you say, when you're seeking that relationship because... 
when you're in the spirit, that means you're in the spirit, you're in of God. You're not thinking about the flesh or thinking how good he look and what he's saying or what she's saying or how fine she is or whatever. You're actually in the spirit. And those type of relationships will have a tendency to be of God and they last longer. Because, see, we didn't go at this thing looking at what she looked like, what he looked like, and how he talked, this, this, and that. Because we're in the spirit, we're in the innocence of God, and what God brings together, no man can put us on. And that's the best yes. way, you know, and... We sit out here looking at the using the flesh. We we tend it tends up to not ever. It don't work out. It doesn't work out. It always ends in failure. You know, heartache, disappointment, divorce. You know, or somebody in jail. You can kill them or this, this, and that because <laughs> it wasn't of the spirit anyway. You know, don't kill them, man. Like, don't kill them. <laughs> <laughs> we not advocate no killing nobody. No killing, don't yeah. send anybody to jail. But you're right in the sense that if you know what God puts puts together, no man can put us under. And if we make sure that our relationships stay in the spirit of godliness, yeah. that we work and walk with a spirit of faith and love with one another, then you know no one can come in. Although the enemy will try, and we have to make sure that we're not falling by the wayside, by the attempts of the enemy. So tell us, Sister Tiffany, how important is it that we be a part of a Bible-based church, that we learn the word, and we're able to put it on the inside of us. So when it's time to fight the enemy, and we're all going to have that time, that we got to fight the enemy, and it's never a physical fight. We're always fighting in the spirit. Tell us how important that word is, the word of God is, as I sword in order to attack the enemy, the wiles of the flesh and the enemy and all that he's trying to do. Well, cause, because we live, we live here in this world, mm -hmm. we have to be guarded even as we sleep. Mm -hmm. I've started now uh, because I noticed that when I come to prayer, we're listening here. When I come here to prayer, mm -hmm. we're listening to the reading of the word of God word. And it's so, like I said, I feel like I'm in a, like a, like a base, like I'm, like I'm in a baseball game or something. As soon as I step on the premises of this church, I go safe. You know what I mean? <laughs> great, I great. come into prayer. I listen to the word of God, and I go home afterwards. And they have to read this God word, and it's so calming and so relaxing. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that i have starting. I'm going home now. And when I'm in the shower, I got my speaker and I'm listening to the word of God. I'm turning that TV off. And guess mm -hmm. what I'm going? I'm going to sleep on the reading of the Bible. And I know that the more God, the more word of God that I put in me, the more God, word of God, the spirit spearing out of me. And mm -hmm. I was told that, well, you always talking about God. I said, hallelujah, <laughs> because that's what's in me now. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. putting that in me. So that's what's going to come out. And I've noticed that when as the more I listen to it and the more I read, He's giving me that understanding that I, He's starting to give me this understanding that I didn't get at first. I could read a chapter now that I've read over and over again, but by me, by me tuning in and trying to understand it, not just listening to it because I'm going through it. Right, right, Because I right. picked that word up in a minute. When you going through it, let me, I don't want to talk to nobody now. Use the phone, be busy, <laughs> the phone ringing. I'm talking to everybody. I'm looking at everything on TV. And then as soon as I'm going through it, I don't want to talk to nobody now. No, nope, I'm here to pray. I need to listen to my word. <laughs> I need to get my word in me. But you know what? That's how they did that's what um, Ahab did. Right. As soon as he started going through it, once Elijah told him mm -hmm. what God told him, told him how they was going to die. Oh, now you want to rent your clothes. Right. Oh, right. you want to cry and pray mm -hmm. because you know God see, God know what you did. Right. Yeah. And that's how we are here in this world. We do every, everything and anything. And as soon as and as soon as we get, as soon as we know we're in trouble and we know God is not pleased with us, oh, let me go pick this word up now. <laughs> let me go read something. Let me go look at some old Sunday school lessons. But now it's so refreshing to go and just pick my word up. Amen. And nothing going on. Yeah. Yep. Pick my, and, and learn. Amen. Not just and not just pick the word up and try and find something that suit me and suit my situation that I'm going through. Right. I just want to get closer to God. Amen. Amen. Oh my God, that was great. That was awesome. I'm I'm really really impressed by that. That was really really good. 
because you said so many things. It, it, we, you said one thing that sticks to me that it's, we have to be mindful not to just to go to the word of God, when we go to it when we're going through it. Yeah. But we need to pick up the word on a regular basis. Yes. So we can be able to fight against the enemy and the wiles of Jezebel who will seep in and use all of her 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 wily ways in order to bring back to bring down even the strongest of people that are in the word of God. Sister Angela, if you had to leave everyone with something about Jezebel, what would you tell them about her that would help her or help us not be like her? Don't be like them is what my pastor always says. Tell me, what would you leave with the people of God that are watching this evening? Tell them what would you do? What would you say about you, what you've learned about Jezebel? Wow, what I would say about Jezebel, um, to be right. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no other way to really see it. Just try to do the right thing. And I know sometimes we fall short and we're not going to be perfect. But the thing is to continue to strive to be right because in the end, being evil as she was, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't lead to any a great end. You know, look at, her, look at her downfall. Look what happened to her. And like she stated, she was so bad off to where the dogs didn't even want to eat her hands and her own feet. You know, yeah. you got to be pretty, pretty bad <laughs> that the dogs don't want to eat your hand and your feet. You know, at, at one point in time, she had the opportunity to change, but she didn't take that opportunity. She didn't no. want to do right. At least had a desire. Try to do right. Just just keep trying. You mess up, just keep trying. Just keep trying. Keep trying. You eventually get it together. Right. You know? And when you have such, well, you know, one thing about Jezebel, she had such hate for something or someone or she had such hate for God and hate yeah. for the, of the people People that were wanting to worship God, that that hate was all what she was fueled by. Yes. And when we fall out and find ourselves hating someone so much that we are constantly going up against them and constantly using our power as women in order to control, you will use the beauty of that we have and the, the strut we have and the style that we have. We find ourselves being of the spirit of Jezebel. If you can leave anything with those that are listening tonight, what would you tell them to warn us about the Jezebels that we are surrounded by that always try to take down the kings? Always bring the king down. Talk about that just a little bit. We got one minute. When you find someone that's putting someone else down, or when you find someone that always have to have it their way, mm. try to stray away from them because it's not all about man. It's about God. So if they're not putting the word of God into you, if they're not trying to get you to get closer to God, if they're not speaking the word of God, that you, and not just uh, speaking scriptures that benefit them at the time, but continue, speak more than this. Yeah. Say more than this scripture that's benefiting to you because that's what Jezebel did. Jezebel used fasting because she there was something she wanted to use to get the people to get the people to do what she wanted to do to do. No. Use the word of God to empower somebody. Use the word of God to help lift somebody up. Be of service to God and not of man. Awesome. Thank you, ladies, so much for your awesome wisdom this afternoon, this evening, and how we continue to try to bring up all those that are listening. We thank you all so much for watching the Daughters of Zion talk show. We want to make sure that if nothing else you learn from Jezebel is to don't be like her. There was nothing about her that was of God, and we want to make sure that we bring you all facets of the Bible so we can learn from everyone, even the good and the bad. Thank you, ladies, for an awesome evening. Be blessed.